Hunting with the Mighty Duckfoot Pistol, William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here's a really interesting hunt. I'm Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman, and we are preparing the Mighty Duckfoot Pistol for its first hunt. Yeah! It has taken a while for me to conceive for a hunt for this pistol. But, I went to a recent conference at the Roosevelt Rehabilitation Center in Warm Springs, Georgia, which is a world-class facility for treating people with spinal injuries, and in fact was founded by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he died, actually, there at the Little White House. And among the places erected is Camp Dream. And there, they have quite a few wooden buildings. Well, when we were there for our annual conference with GAWA, the Georgia Outdoor Writers Association, uh, we were amazed with the number of carpenter bees burrowing and making holes in the structure. Well, I don't know if you have seen a carpenter bee, but they're nearly the size of a man, end of a man's finger, and they go in and they eat wood and they build channels and they lay eggs. And this weakens the wood. In fact, they drill holes in it that are a half inch diameter and four to six inches long. Then, if you happen to get woodpeckers that find them and go after these tasty treats in that wood, I mean, these things can really result in the near destruction of a structure. Usually, the way these things are handled is to put seven dust or something in the individual holes, which kills the bees. Well, uh, you know, I'm a black powder guy, and I shoot black powder guns. And I thought that these carpenter bees hanging and flying around bzz, 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 and so on would be ideal targets for a 36 caliber smooth bore pistol loaded with lead dust shot. Well, lead shot comes in a variety of sizes, from very, very coarse indeed, down to dust. And dust is used to load the 22 long rifle shot cartridge, for example. But I don't happen to have any lead dust, but I did have a 36 caliber pistol. Well, that's only a slight problem. Uh, the thing has three barrels. All right, we just throw more stuff out there. Okay. Although one longer barrel pointed in one direction would be rather than three short ones pointed in diverse directions. Okay, we're going to go out there and we're going to use it. So I'm loading it up right now. Well, what do we do? Well, we are going to put 20 grains of black powder, and this is triple F black powder, and I have a little cut off uh, 30 out 6 cartridge case here, which holds about 20 grains. Okay, so measured. And uh, we have a little funnel. All right. And we put that down the barrel. Like so. And we have some 36 caliber felt wads. Boom. All right. Put one of those in there. A striker for a turkey call makes a wonderful ramrod. Okay. Ram that home. Then, for shot, we use sand. Well, is it sand to braise it? Won't it hurt the bore? Well, the bar on this gun is so rough that actually the sand will help smooth it out a little bit. So, okay, we have a measure of sand. Whoa. Now, this is a suitable size for a B-sized target, even if the B is about a half inch long. And we load up another wad. Now, as a matter of procedure, uh, 
I'm going to go out and mow the lawn right closely. The reason being is these wads are recoverable and reusable. Yeah. So we can do that. So I'm going to load up the other barrel and we're going to get our sight prepped and we're going to see if we can find some cart to beat. We are about to hunt with a mighty duck foot pistol. But before we do, we have to do our due diligence. And that is, I have a target over here on my burn pile, and we are going to take a practice shot and see what our dispersion is. Now, I expect to engage at ranges of less than 10 yards. So uh, that's going to be our range. And I am wearing eye protection as well as using earplugs. You do not want to shoot this or any other load of a black powder pistol at a hard target at close range because bounce backs will get you. Been there, done that, don't do it. All right, so we're gonna let you see the shot. Boy, okay, let's see what we did. Now these are caused by our wads right here. Now our sand, yeah, I see some sprinkly hits, more feel here. It's obvious that the pattern is going high. Even at this close range, it is shooting well above the point of aim, which was here. So I'm shooting basically a foot high, so I have to aim low. As Sherlock Holmes would say, Watson, the game is a foot. Too far, too fast. But the ones I'm after are actually nesting in these timbers up here, and that's, that's what I want to prevent. I don't care if they go in other trees out here in the woods. I just don't want them gnawing down my structures. Plus, I actually don't want to shoot toward the building there. Okay. Got it. Got one, got him down. One shot, one kill. But I did have to aim about four inches low. Okay, let's load it up and see if we can get the other one. Because there's at least two that are nesting in here. Well, we're now ready for shot number two. These things are right speedy, by the way, and very agile. more challenging than you might think, guys. Okay. That was number two. I'm going to change the camera angle here so perhaps you can see the bees better as well as the shot. A miss. How did the mighty Duckfoot pistol do? Well, here we are, of course, fresh back from the hunt. And we got game. Yeah! We fired five shots, and we got four beats. Oh, it was not a simple process. Uh, these things had to be close, uh, very close, uh, like a yard or so to be really effective. And I later shot the pistol against the target again, and this is how it patterned. And I've circled the hits so that you can see them better. As you see, this is pretty loose at close range. So yeah, there are plenty of spaces in here that a bee could get through without being hit. And in fact, I did miss one of the five shots. All right. Uh, you see the holes caused by the wads, and these actually penetrated the paper and they penetrated the cardboard. The sand grains uh, did not penetrate cardboard, so there are no penetration holes on the back, although they barely made it through the paper. Does that mean that this isn't a load that you have to be careful of? Of course you do. At close range, yeah, this thing can do injury to a person, so no, 
You uh, do not want to be playing around with this load. Uh, yeah, uh, it can hurt you. But we were successful in our quest. We did learn some things about the gun. Decided the best way to do that is actually use the top of the hammer as your sight. So just hold the pistol and you sight here. Okay? And that will center your shot on the target. We could have also used a heavier kind of material. Uh, crushed marble, for example, has a high density in quartz sand. So that would have made more effective projectiles. Uh, we might also have changed up the wadding somewhat. Uh, perhaps the wad at the front needed to be more fragile, although I did change it and actually use some wads cut from styrofoam containers. Mm, yeah, and uh, those work just fine. If I were going to build a pistol, you know, specifically for this use, for taking out carpenter bees, well, yeah, uh, uh, 36, 40, 45 caliber, smooth bore, a uh, good length of barrel, something about 10 inches or so. And yeah, now I think this could be made to be reasonably effective. Uh, you do need small shot, you do need heavy shot, as heavy as you can reasonably get, and shoot through your gun. But yeah, you can do this. Now, <laughs> these things were sometimes buzzing around my head. I mean, they were right here, right here, boom, 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 boom. And these things scoop. I would probably have been more successful in killing bees with less time if I'd used a ping pong paddle. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so this is another way you can go after these creatures if you need to take them out if they're really damaging your structure. I'm not out to kill every bee in the country. I uh, guess these that are working on my buildings. Okay. Well, for now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my prize-winning books are Extreme Muzzleloading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these are available as softcover and e-books. I have an eight-book e-book series on muzzleloading guns out for 2013-14, and Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzleloading Pistols is the current title. The Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency offers a wide variety of services for those whose mobility is impaired because of injury, illness, or accident. Now, they have completely modernized facilities since Roosevelt's times, so I guarantee you. For information on my books, blogs, and videos, you can go to my website at www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.